The second way that we can describe the electron arrangement in an atom is by making an orbital diagram. So the first way is to use an electron configuration to describe the arrangement. And the second way is to construct an orbital diagram. So that is what we are going to do this evening. <clears throat> forget this, forget this. Now, three rules tell you how to determine, and we don't want to say electron configuration here, you guys. We want to say um, orbital diagram for an element. Okay, so three rules tell you how to determine uh, orbital diagrams for an element. The Aufbau principle, the Pauli exclusion principle, and Hunter rule. The Aufbau principle states electrons enter orbitals of lowest energy first. Aufbau, building up from low energy to high energy. The Pauli exclusion principle states that each orbital may contain only two electrons and they each must have an opposite spin. And last, Hun's rule states that when, electro when electrons occupy orbitals of equal energy, one electron enters each orbital until all the orbitals contain one electron with parallel spins. This will uh, make a lot more sense to you when we actually do an orbital diagram, which we're going to do right now. Now we will get into the more nuances of an orbital diagram in class. So right now I am just going to give you the bare minimum of, um, of orbital diagrams. Okay. So let's start with helium. Let's make an orbital diagram for helium. Now I think that to make an orbital diagram, it's easier to just go ahead and start with its electron configuration first. So helium has an electron configuration of 1s2. And so what would an orbital diagram for helium look like? Well, we're going to make a line, and we're going to call this the 1s orbital. And how many electrons do we have in there? We have two, so it's a full orbital. And so what we're going to do, you guys, is we're going to make these little half arrows which denote each of the electrons. And so one of them is an up. And the other one is a down, okay? And that tells us the spin of the electrons. So helium's 1s orbital has two electrons, and they have an opposite spin. All right, let's do one that's a little bit more complicated. Let's do lithium. Okay, so lithium... 1s2, 2s1. Okay, now what we're going to do with this is, okay, so we've got two orbitals here, an s orbital in quantum level 1 and an s orbital in quantum level 2. Those, that is where lithium's electrons reside. And so, we've got the 1s orbital, and then what I'm going to do, you guys, to denote the fact, and in your book, I can't remember actually whether they just do them all 
parallel, but I'm going to do it up a little bit here for the 2s, because this tells me that these electrons have a little bit more energy. They're in a little bit more higher of an energy state. And so my 1s orbital is full, and my 2s orbital has a single electron. Okay, let's get more complicated. Nitrogen. I'm staring at this because I didn't know if I had enough room. Okay, so nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. One S, two S. Now, if a quantum level has p orbitals, how many p orbitals does it have? Three. And they're in a little bit higher of an energy state than the S orbitals. So I'm going to put three p orbitals here. One. Two, three. We say that this is the 2p sub x, the 2p sub y, and the 2p sub z. One, two, three p orbitals. All right. Now, my 1s has two electrons. Opposite spins. My 2s has got two electrons. Opposite spins. Now, my 2p has three electrons. And according to Hun's rule, each of these orbitals need to have one electron with the same spin before a second electron is added or comes into that orbital. Why? It's for energy purposes and stability. And so I've got three, so that means, you guys, I'm going to go one, two, three. Okay. Uh, there is some vocabulary that we are going to add to this um, in class, but what I do want to say that is that if all of the electrons in an atom are paired, we call that a diamagnetic atom, a diamagnetic atom. So this one is diamagnetic, or you'll see it sometimes as diamagnetic. Both of these atoms have unpaired electrons, a single unpaired electron, one, two, three unpaired electrons. So we call these kinds of atoms paramagnetic. And you guys, what this might make you start thinking about is magnetism itself. And what we're going to do tomorrow is we're going to look at the, the, um, the orbital diagrams for the three elements um, that are uh, naturally magnetic can, and can be magnetized, and those three are iron, cobalt, and nickel. Okay, we've got some rare earth metals, very rare metals that also can be magnetized, but in just the normal everyday or everyday world, iron 
cobalt and nickel. And we're going to have a look at their orbital diagrams and think about and observe what is it about those orbital diagrams for those elements that will allow them to be magnetized. And what does that mean anyway, that they are just regular really magnetic? Okay, we'll have lots of practice with orbital diagrams in class.